Next. Uh, this was also a thing I could not find the source of. I think it was clipped out of something from the uh, Tucker Carlson News Network, which is his own thing now after he got let go from uh, Fox News for being too too besed. Uh, but he decides to go through a rush. I went from movie. amused to legitimately angry. Um, so we were guessing what this would cost. Everybody here is from the United States buys groceries, and we didn't pay any attention to costs as we were just putting in the cart what we would actually eat over a week. And we all came in around 400 bucks, about 400 bucks. Um, it was $104 US here. And that's when you start to realize that ideology maybe doesn't matter as much as you thought, corruption. If you take people's standard of living and you tank it through filth and crime and inflation, and they literally can't buy the groceries they want, at that point, maybe it matters less what you say or whether you're a good person or a bad person. You're wrecking people's lives in their country, and that's what our leaders have done to us. And coming to a Russian grocery store, the heart of evil, and seeing what things cost and how people live, it will radicalize you against our leaders. That's how I feel anyway, radicalized. Tucker Carlson had his, his Yeltsin moment. I think it was Yeltsin, because it was in the late 90s. It was worth, I think it was under Ronald Reagan where um, I'm pretty sure it was Boris Yeltsin that went to the United States and they gave him a tour of a supermarket. And he looked around and said, if the Soviet people saw what the Americans had access to, there would be revolution. Um, and it was, it, was a, it was a turning point in, in Soviet um, philosophy and it basically led to the was one of the things there's there's many there's many compounding causes to why the soviet union broke up but um boris yeltsin and his uh gorbachev both liberalized the soviet union towards capitalism um in part because they were falling behind so much that the economy had stagnated but then they you know they went to the u.s and they saw things and like wow things aren't so bad abroad and i think people people are going to give me shit for this but you know hear me out you're, you're listening to my podcast. Hopefully you don't think I'm a total fucking retard. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm fucking with my microphone because I feel like I'm quiet. Am I quiet? Am I quiet? Um, but when you, when you go to, when you go to a foreign country in Europe, even, even ones that are getting shittier and you see how nice things are, like Serbia is a poor country. You can still take the bus. The buses are old. The buses are like Soviet era. The shit's like, you know, they're obviously very dilapidated and it's crowded, but it's still, it's not violent. You know what I mean? You're never, you're never at unease on the bus. You can take a train in Ukraine. You never feel at unease, even if it's an old, probably a Soviet era train that's running on the tracks. Um, the, the, the Moscow, I've never been to Moscow, but the Moscow, uh train station is famous for being basically a museum uh it's like a michelangelo painting you know in a, in a subway station and you think how is that possible because in the united states it doesn't matter if it was 500 year old art it would be painted over and tagged and, and ruined um and that's very radicalizing it is genuinely radicalizing and uh, people give me shit for this but you you go to the grocery store you buy groceries and some of the stuff some things in particular are a higher quality of grocery for a quarter of the price than what you get in the United States. And it's, it's, um, it's angering. And, and from what I understand, things are even worse than they, than they were when I left. Uh, I've, I've looked at, cause I have to, I'm, I'm looking at the U S and I'm budgeting and I'm going to cost of living things. And it's just like 400% more for groceries. It's like 10 times as much to eat out. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking at that and budgeting. It's like, even though I make more money than I ever have, I'm looking at this. I'm thinking like, how the fuck am I going to afford this bullshit? Cause it's so expensive now. Um, so yeah, people are making fun of them because it's true. There is income disparity in Russia and Ukraine and Serbia. The poorest people in, in those countries are much poorer than the poorest people in the United States. And that is not because of uh, the success of the American system. If you look at our federal budget, it's like, I think half, I think literally half. So every, every 50 cents of every dollar that you send the IRS or get taxed federally goes to either 
HUD, which is housing credits, or EBT, which is a part of HUD, or Medicare and Medicaid. And everybody else, and those those are programs literally just to give black people and illegal immigrants free shit, free phones, free housing, free medical coverage, um, free free food, and now that food can be used for uh, restaurants, and that food can be uh, paid for, like everything goes on EBT now. It, there used to be a, um, remember the, there's Lose Yourself by Eminem, and uh, in that line it says, man, these goddamn food stamps don't buy diapers. Well, I'm pretty sure EBT buys diapers now. <laughs> I could be wrong. Maybe it's only state by state, but I'm pretty sure food stamps buy diapers now. And th these are only programs for the poorest people. So the poorest people, the and illegal immigrants, because you cannot be discriminated against by your immigration status, are, have access to all the things that middle-class Americans who actually pay taxes cannot have access to. Um, and what you see in, in Russia, the re reason why when you go to Russia and Serbia and Ukraine and you see groceries for basically fucking nothing, they don't have these programs. Um, actually, it's not even true. Russia does have socialized health care. It's not the best. It's not like the most Gucci shit on the, on the planet. Um, but you do have access to some medical care in Russia because they kept their socialized medicine from the Soviet Union era. But then people, um, food stamps by DoorDash, yeah. So, I mean, why do you think restaurant costs are way up in the U.S.? Because uh, people are receiving government credit, and then they can spend that however they want. And the things that they're buying go up in cost because they're subsidized by the government. And then normal people who want to order out can't afford it because they don't get subsidies to buy restaurant food with. That's why they go That's why they go up. Um yeah, it, it's it's completely fucked. And all you have to do, literally, all you have to do is go outside the country for a couple years and you're like, oh my God, like things are actually fucked. And when you understand how our medical care system came to be as like a series of compromises to avoid, uh, they call it the two Santas. Basically, the Republicans give tax cuts and uh, the Democrats give free shit. And then they never like actually... Uh, go back and change each other's policies because that would be very unpopular. The result is you have a completely broken system. But I mean, the 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 perp like the purpose of a system is what it does, and what the system does is it destroys the middle class and creates a uh, disparity between the ultra rich who are allowed to be ultra rich because they're in line with what the government wants and what mega corporations want, and then you have everybody else who can't do shit and rely on the government to eat. That's it. That's what it does. Why do you, why why is the system built in such a crazy way? Because the purpose of the system is what it does. And what it does is it makes people poorer and makes the rich richer. And that's the that's actually the goal. And the nanosecond you leave the United States, and the nanosecond you look at any other country, be it Russia or Australia or Serbia or Germany or the Netherlands or whatever the fuck, you'll see that in most of these countries they have a system that is saner than the United States even if you don't agree with it in um in any other context no i do not listen to other, I, do, I don't listen to any other podcasts <laughs> believe it or not if you look at the same set of facts if you go to these foreign countries and you experience living there you will come to the same conclusions without listening to each other tucker carlson goes to russia for a fucking weekend and he's like oh my god i can my dollar goes so much further here because it's not subsidized by fucking ebt Anybody who has these experiences will come to the exact same conclusion. Yeah, Australia has single, single payer, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm telling you, dude, every other country has figured this out. And the reason, and people say the United States can't afford global health care. Yes, it can. The reason why it can't is that we do something that no other country with social health care does. We do not set fixed prices. $75 in aspirin, $150 for a fucking plastic tube. They charge whatever they want to charge, and then they bill the government for it, and the government asks no questions. Why is it like that? Because we don't have fixed price limits, and the government never questions a bill. Every other country on the planet has different rules than this. If you go to a, go to a social ho uh, hospital in any country, they will be the government sets the prices on, on medical uh, stuff, so they are not bankrupted by the system it would be trivial for the u.s based on its massive budget we we still pay more per capita 
uh, for healthcare than any other country in the world. And that's because we do not set price limits. And they're bought and sold. It's, it's, it's deliberately broken. It's deliberately broken. And I'm convinced that what they're trying to do now is liquidate the country. Like with Disney. Why are they, why does Disney do things that don't benefit its bottom line? Cause they are taking existing properties. They're putting no effort into it, no money into it, no thought into it. They're trying to squeeze as much capital as they can out of it. They're taking it out of the company and out of the country to banks in Israel. And they want to leave the United States completely and totally destitute, utterly broken, filled with people that hate the fucking country that are only there for economic reasons so they can never, ever become a global superpower again. That's why it exists. And that's what you get when you go to Russia and eat fine cheeses that you cannot find in the United States. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice!